Welcome to SQL Server 101 for Absolute Beginners. We are on a learning journey, so sit back and relax. Now, who would be Rashid Khan? That is about me. I have a degree in computer science from New Jersey Institute of Technology, New Jersey, USA. I have extensive professional experience with Microsoft Stack of Technology that include SQL Server, SSRS, SSIS, SSAS, ASP.NET, and .NET Development. Also, I have worked with different types of companies belonging to different verticals that include finance, manufacturing, consulting, and most recently, in delivering a cutting-edge analytics solution for a Fortune 500 healthcare organization utilizing HL7, MS SQL Server, SSRS, SSIS, SSAS, and ASP.NET. Now, who would be the target audience for this course, or what are the prerequisites for taking this course? I expect zero prior experience with SQL Server or with any other flavor of database. You will need a PC, laptop, or desktop, your pick. You will also need SQL Server 2012 Express Edition, which is freely available at Microsoft site, and I will show you how to download and install it. You also need a high-speed internet connection. This course has been structured around eight modules. In modules one and two, you will get to know about required piece of hardware and software to install SQL Server. 2012 Express Edition. You will also understand basic configuration and uh, get to know about SA login. You will get to know what an RDBMS is, what MDF and LDF files are. In Module 3, you will get to know how to get around SQL Server Management Studio, Query Window, and Object Explorer. We will also go over some of the pre-built system databases and we'll, we will also install a sample database called AdventureWorks. In module four, we will go over a bare minimum select statement. We will also know about from clause. We will get to play with column names. And finally, we will also rearrange columns to our liking. In module five, we will focus our attention to narrowing down result set. We will see how where clause and order by clause work. We will also filter data based on date and time fields. We will do some pattern matching and we'll get to know about wildcards. Finally, we will also dig into not and in operators. In module six, we will get to know how to deal with null, which is a special way of saying nothing or unknown in SQL Server. We will work with the strings and dates. We will also go over some of the system functions that will make our lives easier. In modules seven and eight, we will go over retrieving data from multiple tables and we'll get to know what different types of joints are. We will also go over union, subqueries, and aggregate functions. We will also get to know about group by clause and having clause in order to group and summarize our data. On completion of the course, you will get a bonus section with a lot of goodies in it. And of course, you will also get a certificate of completion. Now, some people ask me about how to succeed learning a new concept or a tool. I say there are only three ways to succeed learning. Step one would be to practice. Step two would be to do more practice. Step three, you guessed it, even more practice. I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to drop me a line with your suggestions and or comments. Thanks for watching and happy learning.
In this lecture, we will go over different editions of SQL Server that are being offered by Microsoft. Each one of them catering to specific needs of a particular type and size of organization. We will briefly touch upon different bells and whistles, that is, unique features that come along with each type of edition. Then we will get into details about required hardware and software for the installation of SQL Server on your machine. There are three principal editions of SQL Server 2012. At the top of the food chain comes the Enterprise Edition. It is a premium offering from Microsoft and is widely used to provide robust, high-performance, mission-critical solutions for large enterprises. It comes in both flavors, 32-bit and 64-bit. Then comes the business, business Intelligence Edition. It is more suited to provide solutions around business intelligence-based data. It has reduced features when it comes to transactional-based data in comparison to Enterprise Edition. Like Enterprise ed Edition, Microsoft offers this edition in both flavors, 32-bit and 64-bit. At the third position comes the Standard Edition. It has reduced set of features and is specifically tailored for small organizations that don't work with very large data sets. Like the other two editions, this one also comes for 32-bit uh, for and 64-bit systems. However, please keep this in mind that a more detailed discussion about these three editions is beyond the scope of this course. Please stay tuned for my next upcoming course where we will dive a little deeper. Now this begs the question as to how we can get to play with SQL Server without shelling out huge sums of money. For this very purpose, thankfully, Microsoft gives us two options, which I call Editions of SQL Server 2012 to get your hands dirty with. First comes the Developer Edition. This is available at nominal cost from Microsoft. It may be used to build and test application. However, it is not licensed for production. It comes with all the bells and whistles of the Enterprise Edition. Finally, we have an Express Edition, which is absolutely free to use and is ideal for small organizations. This is the one that we will utilize for this course. These are the system requirements for installing SQL Server 2012 Express Edition on your machine. We can work either of these operating systems, Windows 7, Windows Server 2008 R2, Windows Server 2008 Service Pack 2, Windows Vista Service Pack 2. For a 32-bit system, we need Intel or any other compatible processor with speed 1 GHz or higher. Microsoft recommends 2 GHz or higher. But for 64-bit system, we need 1.4 GHz or higher processor. And as far as memory is concerned, we need 512 MB of RAM. Microsoft recommends 2 GB or more. In terms of storage, we need 2.2 GB of available hard disk space. Before starting installation, we need to enable Microsoft.NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1 and download and install Microsoft.NET Framework 4.0. Next, I will walk you through the actual steps of finding out the configuration of your system in order to prepare it for installation. Easiest way to find out hardware configuration of your machine would be to actually right click on your my computer icon, then click properties. Here you will see uh, the operating system installed and the hardware configuration it is running on. In my case, I have Windows Server 2008 R2 data center operating system. 
with an Intel processor having speed of 1.6 gigahertz. Also installed memory is 6 gigabytes. Now I need to find out how much of free hard disk space I have. And it turns out that I have plenty. We also need to find out the .NET framework installed. We need to browse to, the, to this folder, depending on whether you have a 32-bit or 64-bit system. In my case, I have both .NET Framework version 3.5 and version 4.0 installed. If you don't find it on your machine, please first install .NET, .NET Framework version 3.5 by downloading it from the URL shown on the screen. And then afterwards, download and install .NET Framework version 4.0 by downloading it from the URL. In this lecture, we will download SQL Server 2012 Express Edition. Then we will also download AdventureWorks Sample Database and get ready for the next lecture where we will actually install the product. In order to download SQL Server 2012 Express Edition, you will need to go to the URL as shown on the screen. Once on the site, we leave the language selections to be English and then click on Download button. Here we will select either this file, if you have 64-bit operating system, or we will select this file, assuming that you have a 32-bit operating system installed. Notice the file sizes in both cases, it is 1.3 gigabytes. In my case, since I have a 64-bit operating system, I will select the 64-bit installation file and will go ahead and click Next. I'll save the downloading file on my desktop and depending on my internet speed, the download should finish. I will pause the screen for a while to let the download finish. OK. I am back and the file has been downloaded successfully. Now we need to go to the site to download AdventureWorks sample database. Here, click on the icon that says SQL Server 2012 OLTP. Now go ahead and click on the link that says AdventureWorks 2012 data file. Once again, I will save the download on my desktop and pause the screen to let the download finish. OK, once again I'm back and the file has been downloaded successfully. See, that was easy breezy and we, we are prepared for our next lecture. We will actually install the downloads. In this lecture, we will see how to install SQL Server 2012 Express Edition on your machine. You will be familiarized with some of the basic configuration options. After that, you will see how to put the downloaded sample database AdventureWorks to use for our subsequent lectures. In order to begin installation, you would need to double click on the installer that we had downloaded in previous lecture. Depending on security setting of your machine, you might get a prompt asking to whether run or not the executable. 
since we have downloaded it directly from Microsoft site, we are fairly confident that Microsoft is more than capable of keeping malwares at bay. Go ahead and click on run. This begins ext extraction of installation files to a temporary folder. I will pause the screen and let the process finish. Okay, I am back and looks like the extraction process is near about its completion. A SQL Server installer initiates the actual installation process from here. Next, you will get a window that says SQL Server Installation Center. Since we are not upgrading an already installed prior version of SQL Server, you will need to click on the top option. After clicking, Setup Wizard takes over. Setup Wizard first attempts to check different dependencies that are needed for successful install. Hopefully on your machine, all dependencies are already there. Once all checks pass, click on OK. Next, we are taken to Product Update step. Please be sure to check the checkbox to include SQL Server product updates. From time to time, Microsoft patches critical vulnerabilities found in prior version of its product. So it is highly advisable that you select the option and make sure that your machine is connected to high-speed internet connection. It will check for updates and after it completes, uh, check it, sh it shows up result. In my case, an update was found and it will get included in our install procedure. Go ahead and click on, on Next. This initiates the download and installation of setup files that are necessary. You could also find a list of tasks with their corresponding completion status. In my case, a prompt appears indicating that once the installation gets finished, I would need to restart my machine. I had to OK it. Now once again, Setup Wizard appears with a list of tasks as listed out in the left pane of the window. During Setup Rules, rules check, it gave me a warning and since it is not an error, I can ignore warnings for now to remain within the scope of this course. Next, you will get to select options for installation type task. Here you may notice that since we are going for a new install and we will leave the top option to be checked. As a side note, since on my machine I had installed other versions of SQL Server, you may see them in the list of installed instances. Go ahead and click Next. This takes us to License Terms where you will need to accept the license terms by clicking on the respective checkbox. If you would notice, there is another checkbox, which is for providing your consent to share your usage data with Microsoft. We might just leave it unchecked as we would, would not want Microsoft to know what we do and what we don't with our installed SQL Server. Go ahead and click Next. Now we get to select features to be installed. For the sake of this exercise, we will click on Select All. Here you would also see the folder path where shared features will be installed. Go ahead and click Next.
setup wizard will finish up another task and will take you to instance configuration task. Here you have an option to specify your instance either to be default or to be a named instance. While remaining within the scope of this course and without getting bogged down by a whole lot of details, please note that since we may install SQL Server on the same machine more than once, we need to name each installs differently so that they might be referred to unambiguously. Also, just an F FYI, Default install instance could be referred either by the machine name itself or simply a period. Go ahead and select named instance and name it as SS2K12EXPRESS. -E -S. Also, please take a note of SQL Server directory and reporting services directory, which we will refer to in our subsequent lectures. Go ahead and click Next. If you have enough disk space, you will find yourself on server configuration task. Here we will go with the defaults as a detailed discussion about service accounts under the context of which each of the SQL Server service runs is a topic for my upcoming advanced level course. Without making any modifications, go ahead and click Next. This will take you to Database Engine Configuration. Here we will actually make some modifications and note down some of the details. First comes Authentication Mode offering two choices. Please keep this in mind that SQL Server will let you in, or in other words, authenticate you based on the context of window user ID you have logged into your machine or by providing a set of SQL Server user ID and password. For the sake of this course, we will select Mixed Mode. Now you will need to provide a secure password for a special SQL Server user ID named SA. You also need to confirm the same. A detailed discussion about SA login is in, in an upcoming lecture. Now would be the time to add current window user in the SQL Server administrator's group of users by clicking on the corresponding button. Go ahead and click Next. In my case, I got a validation error message indicating that the SA password that I chose is not strong enough and does not meet strong password requirements. I had to simply OK the error message and provide a stronger password. Now you would need to go to Data Directories tab and make a note of dif different default directories, including User Database Directory. In order to continue on, go ahead and click Next. On the Reporting Services Configuration Task window, we will leave Defaults as it is and click on Next. For error reporting, you will leave the checkbox unchecked and continue, you would need to click on Next. From here, 
setup wizard takes over and starts installation. For the sake of saving screen time, I will pause the screen and let it run. Okay, I'm back and it looks like installation was successful as indicated by a status message by each of the SQL Server components. In my case, as previously, I got a prompt saying that I need to restart my machine, which I will OK it. Please keep this in mind that a summary log file is generated at the location shown. Now go ahead and close the setup wizard by clicking on close button and closing down the parent wizard window. Now we will make use of our sample database called AdventureWorks that we had downloaded in our previous lecture. Locate the downloaded file and notice the file extension. I should say MDF, which signifies the fact that it is a data file. A detailed discussion surrounding MDF, that is a data file, and LDF, that is log files, will be held in an upcoming lecture. Although it is not necessary, however, for the sake of conforming to SQL Server installation directory structure, you will putting the downloaded AdventureWorks database in the user database directory that you had noted down in one of the prior steps. You need to browse to default user database directory. Here you might notice several directories. As on my machine, I had installed several instances of different versions of SQL Server. You might also notice that all directories adhere to a particular naming convention. However, for the sake of this course, please focus to the, uh, on the directory that was created for this, this particular instance of SQL Server that we just installed. On reaching the destination directory, you would need to cut and copy the sample database to the directory. Now, in order to render the sample database useful, you'll be performing an operation called attaching a database. We will do this via SQL Server Management Studio, which is a GUI application that Microsoft provides us to interact with installed SQL Server. However, please keep this in mind that there are usually more than one way to achieve the same objective. And for the sake of this course, we will be attaching database as compared to other database migration techniques that are out there. You will need to fire off SQL Server Management Studio from Start Menu. Once opened, you will need to provide server name or the instance name while keeping the server type selection to, to be database engine. You could try to authenticate yourself by using SA login credential or by Windows authentication. Leave Windows Authenticate, authenticate, authenticate selected and clicked, uh, click on Connect. Ah, oh, darn, we, got, uh, we get an error message saying that the server was not found or was not accessible. Please OK out of the error message. Go back to the server name and expand the drop down list and click on Browse for More option. Expand the database engine node as shown on the screen. Here you will find a list of installed instances. You would also notice that the instance name is preceded by the machine name and then, and then a backslash. 
So in my case, proper way to refer to the instance we just installed would be ALIF, that is the machine name, a backslash, and then SS2K12EXPRESS, -E -S, that is the instance name. Go ahead and select the instance we just installed and OK out of the window. Now try to connect. And voila, you will find yourself connected to your installed instance of SQL Server. You will also notice an object explorer in the left pane with different folders shown in a tree-like structure. Click on the database node or folder and it will expand showing the databases that are available in this particular instance. Right click on database folder and select attach option on it. You will be presented with an attached database window. Go ahead and click on the add button as shown. This open, opens up the default user database directory where we already had placed AdventureWorks MDF file in one of our prior steps. Go ahead and select AdventureWorks MDF and OK out of the window. If you notice under database details window, in my case it is showing two files. First one being the downloaded MDF and the second one LDF. This might not happen on your, on your machine. In my case, by remaining within the scope of this course, I will select the log file row and click remove button. However, please keep this in mind that this should not be done with a production database at all. Go ahead and OK out of the window. Assuming there were no hiccups at your end, you would notice that a brand new database called AdventureWorks 2012 has been attached inside the database folder in Object Explorer. Now click upon the AdventureWorks 2012 node and expand the tables folder. Here, here you will notice all the tables that come with sample database. Congratulations, you have laid the groundwork for our subsequent lectures. Thank you for watching. In this lecture, you will get to know what SA login is. And you will take some basic steps to secure it. SA login is a default login with full administration rights for SQL Server. For folks coming from Unix or Linux world, it holds, it holds similarity with the root or super user holding all the privileges to do anything with the server. Let's fire off SQL Server Management Studio and explore some of the basic concepts surrounding SA login. Go ahead and connect to the installed instance. Now expand security folder under object explorer by clicking on it. Now click logins folder to expand it and to see list of available authorized users for the instance. Locate the SA login and right click on it and then select properties. This brings up login properties window for the SA user. Here you can notice that there are different options including ability to change the SA password, enforce password policy, or even force the password to expire. Now click on a status page as shown in the left pane of the window. This should bring up status settings for the SA login. 
Here you can enable or disable the SA login. Although it is beyond the scope of this course, it is advisable to keep SA login disabled in production databases. I, I ran into an ex interesting website that I thought to share with you. It tries to predict how long it would take to crack your password by computing power that is available today. It can be reached at the link shown on a screen. Go ahead and type some password that is easy to guess. For example, P A S S W O R D. And it appears that it can be cracked instantly. Now, if you try to type in a few phrases separated by dots, you would notice that the strength of your password increases exponentially. Go ahead and type in my.secure.password dot three six zero and you would notice that it says it will take hundred and fifty four quintillion years to crack your password see better safe than sorry please be sure to select a very strong sa password if you're going to keep the login enabled in your production environment thanks for watching this completes first leg of our journey. In this module, we discussed about the prerequisites for installing SQL Server 2012 Express Edition in terms of hardware as well as installed software. You saw a comparison of different editions of SQL Server that are being offered by Microsoft, tailored to specific needs of an organization. You downloaded and installed SQL Server 2012 Express Edition and sample database called AdventureWorks. You also got to know about special Super User SA and you also got to know some of the best practices in handling the all -power powerful user. See you in next module. In the meanwhile, feel free to stretch out or grab a cup of coffee or tea. Although caffeinated, both contain some amount of antioxidants. Enjoy. And thanks for watching.